How's it going? This video is going to be a little different. I've teamed up with one of my friends to do a product review. If you think you like this product, you know where to find the links. And if you like the way this person does the review, there'll be a link to their channel down there as well. That's enough yapping. Let's see what this thing's all about. Well, what are we fixing today? Uh, today, we're looking at a TiVo Tarantula Pro 3D printer. Uh, it came as part of the uh, product demonstration series that Dr. Thies has come up with. If you take a look at somewhere up here probably or and in the description, uh, we're going to add a link to the video where I stream putting it together and taking it out of the box. That'll be on my channel. What we're going to do today is go through setup and startup and some of the things that you got to do to make it work. The uh, sponsor for today's video, Giz Coupon. Take a look at their stuff here. They have coupons for electronics and uh, like just about everything else. You know, they're our sponsor for today, so thank you, Giz Coupon. Well, here's the printer. Well, the first thing I want to tell you is when you buy the printer, buy filament. Over here is the first item that you're going to print, the last piece of the machine, and it's for holding your spools of stuff. The only thing is, they, the filament they give you is not enough. So I ended up with most of a filament thing, not quite all of a filament thing, uh, enough to make it work. I'll probably print another one later on when I get some bigger spools. So after the assembly, the first thing I worked on was the Z-axis. There are two screws here and here that control where this motor sits. When you have this all the way down, mine wanted to bind down here. So you loosen up these two screws and you get this so that it's happy, so that there isn't a lot of binding going on between where the bottom of the carriage is and that, and then you snug those up. And then you move the lead screw all the way up to the top into here, and you do the same for these two screws. You loosen them up and make sure everything's happy and it's not bindy. And after I did all that, the motor still wanted to click when I got all the way down to the bottom. What you could add is some light lithium grease to the lead screw. You can see that lubricated. You grease it all the way up and down. I used something that, that was made for that. And I put that on a lead screw and after I did that, it worked just fine. You see where the head ends up. Make sure the head nozzle here is still over the top of the platter. When this is all the way pushed forward. And then when you push it all the way back, you want to make sure the same here. In order to make that work, so that's adjusted, you have the Y motor here that you would, you can adjust, and the Y end stop here you can adjust. When you're all done, you want to make sure that this belt is good and tight. If you're getting wobbly, weird prints, make sure your belts are good and tight. So let's turn it on. So the next thing you do once you have that in is you need to test and make sure all the stops work and the motors work. The other thing is when you turn it on, the two sensors should be at room temperature. Push the button, prepare, move axis. First one we're going to move is Z, because you want to make sure it's working. So make sure it stops the machine. I'm going to set it so that it's going down, and then I'm going to press the button, and it should stop travel. Head it down, stop the travel. So that's, that's correct. I'm going to move it up a ways here. And when you click it now, it should not stop. I'm going to go back to the screen. Push. Here, push. Let's move Y. Now the Y switch is here. And we're going to do the same kind of thing with that one. Move it plus. It comes towards me. And move it minus. And it should stop movement. And it does. It won't go minus anymore. And zeros is... So... That's working correctly. And here's the switch for this one. So when it's when it's moving negative, push the button and it should stop. And there it did. So those are the tests to make sure that the stops are in place and they're working. Once those are going, you need to check the heaters. The extruder will not move until the head is at 200 degrees. You gotta heat the thing up to get to that. Main, go under control. Temperature, nozzle, set this to 200. Enter. Now let's go back to the main screen. We can see it heating up. 
in full screen. I'm gonna watch it heating up. As it gets closer, this fan in the front should come on. Our fan is running. Once that's at 200, go back to prepare, move axis, extruder. Extruder motor is over here. That way. Backwards. Once you've tested the extruder, you want to get back and turn the heater off. Next thing to do is do fan speed and set this to something over 200. The layer, layer coolers come on. That blows air down here to cool the layers on the thing. So that's working. And the next thing to test is the bed. Set the bed to about 50 degrees and we can watch the bed heat up. There we go. Close enough. So you can see that holds. Let's just make sure it doesn't go overboard. It seems happy. So the next thing on the list is to find home for each of the things. So we go to prepare. We're going to start with homing X. X is that one. This is it, homing X. Now we're going to do home Y, which is this one. Okay, there it does home Y. And then we're going to do home Z. But here you have to watch it, make sure the head isn't going to hit, and it probably won't, because there's a built-in 12 millimeter offset here. It should do this without any clicking and clattering and any complaints. So now you know all three of your axes can home. And watch the magic happen. So now we have a machine that can do X, Y, Z. The bed's tested, the nozzle's tested. Auto home. The next thing we do is set the height. And for the height, you want something that's about a tenth of a millimeter. What is it, an index card? That's about right. Uh, I need to manually move the machine. So we put this into disable stepper so that I can manually move stuff. So now I should be able to move it by hand. So what we're doing now is moving this so that it is over the bed. You see the nozzle down there? You want to take a piece of paper, and it, you don't force it in, but it just touches on the top and bottom. You adjust it by turning this knob. Here. It's fitting with just a little bit of resistance. When you move the carriage over, you check the same thing in this corner. going around the towel, you don't have to adjust anything. There, now my bed's level. That's how you level a bed. The next thing you do is advance the filament. Stick it in the hole and push. And you push a little more and that gets it started in there, in the gear. You want to get the filament underneath this little drive gear. You advance this until it's all the way driven down into the head. And it goes down into the head quite a ways. You'll kind of feel some resistance when you get there. And I hear a click. At that point, your filament is down into the head where it belongs, and it should print fine. It came with an SD card. You take the SD card, stick it in, card inserted. I'm going here and do print from SD, test, support G-code. This is the program that makes this thing for you. Make sure you have enough filament the piece that came with it's probably not enough because it wasn't enough for me. And if I push enter here, it all starts heating and moving and doing all its stuff. Well, that's my presentation for today. All in all, experience is good so far. Everything seems to work. Everything aligns nice. It assembled well. I like it a lot. I give it a thumbs up. Check it out. There's a link in the description if you want one. It's less than $200. That's it. Thanks. That's all for now. Bye. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, 
This box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.